Hello friends, I'm Greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.3 white box test techniques. And as a part of today, we'll be covering the second technique under this category, which is branch testing. So we have discussed a lot about the introduction to this category in our previous technique, previous tutorial itself. And uh, we, today we'll be just concentrating on the part of branch testing and branch coverage. So uh, indeed, when it comes to the branch testing, it is a technique which helps you to test all the possible branches within a given fragment of code. And uh, generally that is done by finding out minimum number of test cases and the branch coverage will be measured as the coverage achieved by the written test cases already. So it's not necessary exactly that uh, you have achieved 100% coverage when you've not followed the technique. So you can always measure that by the uh, coverage diagram itself. So anyways, we'll come to the coverage as a second part of it. Uh, for now, let's concentrate on branch testing. So as for the syllabus, it just says that it is mainly used for uh, regress. These are regress techniques that are used for some safety critical, mission critical, or high integrity environments to achieve more thorough code coverage. And branch testing is a technique to drive the minimum number of tests to measure the branches in the given fragment of code, whereas branch coverage is a metric to measure the coverage achieved by the test. Also to add, uh, branch testing is considered as a stronger technique than the statement testing. Why? You will understand in some time. And on top of it, we can also make a decision or conclusion that 100% branch coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage, but not vice versa. So these two statements you will only understand when you are done listening to the decision coverage conversation. So let's get into the technique and talk about it. So just to recap and redo the same thing, uh, we remember that a fragment of code is generally converted into flowcharts where the flowchart consists of two major components, that is branch and statement. So in our previous technique, we already understood that uh, the black boxes here are representing the statements, which are also called as nodes. And the other green lines are basically referred to as branches, which are basically the decisions made from a condition. So true or false. So covering all the decisions, all the branches is what we refer to as branch testing. So finding out the minimum number of test cases to cover all the branches. So this time I'm not interested in the nodes, I'm not interested in the components, but I'm pretty much interested in how the branches are getting covered. So let's take the same similar examples to find out what could be the difference between statement testing and decision testing. So taking this very first example, of course, the number of test cases would remain the same. Why? Because of course I need one path to cover the true and second path to cover the false. So of course, the minimum number of test cases would remain the same as far as the true and false are considered. But when it, I change the example, the answer will also vary. So taking the second example, what I've taken in statement testing, I would like to consider the same example here also. And here we said that we don't have any else statement, where that means we don't have any nodes on the else part, but we have only node on the true part. So in this case, if you notice, we have multiple decisions made, right? We have true going in the right direction, true again, but false, we have two more, right? And this branch coverage, which is to measure the decisions, I need to make sure that all the decisions have been covered, right? So in that case, I would need one continuously going through the true path here, which will be the complete outer path. Then second is to cover the false of A is equal to 21. And third test, I would need to cover the false of a greater than zero. So in this context, I would need at least three test cases to have 100% branch coverage. Okay, so let's understand the difference between the statement and branch. Statement is just the black boxes. So I can even do this particular scenario with one test. Minimum one test is enough to cover all the statements. But when it comes to covering 100% branches, I would need three because I cannot cover it in one sequential way all the three different paths, right? All the three different branches. So that's where it is different. Now, coming to that point, what we discussed in the beginning, that branch testing is considered as stronger technique than statement. 
taking the right this example itself in this example i would need just one test to have 100 percent statement coverage but in order to do 100 percent decision coverage i need three test cases and that's where decision has a better coverage or better you know interaction with the code than that of statement and that's why we made that statement that's decision coverage which is branch coverage is a stronger technique than that of statement and now we can also conclude by saying 100% branch coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage why because if i have achieved 100% branch coverage on any fragment of code statement is already included in that but not vice versa in this case if i have achieved 100% statement coverage that does not guarantee 100% decision coverage which is branch coverage right i hope that absolutely makes sense if not please re-watch this video it will connect the dots and these two techniques are different from each other so they will ask you a theoretical question about the definition of statement testing decision testing or which one is stronger what are the true things about these two techniques or they can ask you this statement the last statement itself that is 100 percent decision coverage guarantees 100 percent statement coverage and they will twist this around multiple times to check your knowledge that which one of this statement is true. So the questions will revolve around the definitions and these statements. So please stick to that. But sometimes the questions would be about, hey, if I don't have any else statement, how many tests I would need, but not the pictorial one. They will not give you program based questions to ask in the examination and no diagrams to be drawn, no solution based approach to be used. But theoretically, you will have to stick to it as much as possible. So let's look at the second part of it that if I'm not using these techniques and then I want to measure the coverage. So how can I measure the coverage altogether? Okay, so let's have a look on that too. So in order to understand the definition of decision coverage or statement coverage, we would like to take a quick example right here. They're exactly the same. It's just that again, the only difference is what are you measuring, the statement or the branch, right? So taking this quick example on your screen right now, it says, for the given flowchart, which is on the right, of course, following paths and test cases have been executed, which is like test one and test two. What decision coverage is achieved? So here this gentleman says that uh, this person has not used any technique to derive the minimum number of test cases. However, he claims that he has performed two tests and we want to find out what coverage has been achieved. So all we have to do is pick up these two test cases and put it on the diagram to see whether all the decisions have been covered or not. And a simple calculation has to be done in order to get to the right answer. So let's look at how these test cases are covering our decisions. So first test here is test one A, B, C. So if you go from A, so assume that A, B, C, these circles are the nodes, which are statements and the green arrows are decisions, of course, made from these nodes. So it says the test one is A, B, C, which means A to B, B to C. These two decisions have been covered. So let's take the second test case, which is test two. And here it says A, B, D, F, H. That means A to B, B to D has been covered. D to F, F to H has been covered. So these all decisions have been already occupied. Now, in order to calculate the decision coverage or branch coverage, so both are synonyms, okay? If you find me talking about decision again and again, please, this was just a synonym of branch coverage. So, uh, the simple calculation says that decision or branch coverage can be measured as number of branches executed by the test divided by total number of branches in the code multiplied by 100. So if you notice here, if I have to count the green arrows here in the diagram or in the flowchart, I have eight of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight decisions in this particular diagram. And if I calculate as per my path, A to B, B to C, B to D, D to F, and F to H. These are the only ones which are covered. So one, two, three, four, five. So out of eight, there are only five decisions or five branches which have been covered. So five divided by eight multiplied by 100 because coverage is also always measured in percentage. And that's where it is very important to stick to that. So it's a percentage measure of branches executed by the test. Okay, so five divided by eight multiplied by 100, it's exactly going to be somewhere around 63%. So taking that as the right answer. Okay, so I think that totally makes sense that how exactly do we measure the branch coverage. And same way, if I just replace the words branch from all these topics, all these statements here, 
and put it into statement coverage, then it'll be all about the measure of statement coverage. So let's quickly look at one quick slide here to talk about the statement coverage too. So here, the same thing, exactly D2, but the calculation will be different. That is for a given flowchart, following paths test cases have been executed, what statement coverage is achieved. So here I'm worried about the nodes this time, not the branches. So if I take A, B, C, of course, A, B, C, three nodes have been covered. If I talk about A, B, D, F, H, so another three, that is D, F, H. A, B, C is already covered, so D, F, H also gets covered. So this time, uh, total is again eight, but six out of eight has been covered. Now, if I say six out of eight multiplied by 100, the percentage will be 75. Precisely 75% coverage has been achieved. That means if we want, we can still write one more test case to cover the remaining 25% to get to the 100%. So put together, that's how the coverage measurement or matrix works. So the formulas can be definition of your statement coverage and branch coverage. So they can even ask you example question like, which one of the following is a definition of branch coverage? Then the straightforward answer should be, it's a percentage measure, not number. Okay, it's a percentage measure of statements or branches covered by the tests or exercised by the test. So these are some free keywords what they use in the examination. So make sure that you have a good confidence and then you take it up to the next level, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.